Welcome to the Web3 Artist Spotlight. This episode was recorded on Friday, June 30th, 2023 via Twitter space and YouTube live stream. It was hosted by Giancarlo and Jennifer. And on this episode, we were thrilled to interview Black Ink and digital artist Anna Zubareff. Now I'm going to turn it over to Jennifer to do the introduction for our special guest. Thank you so much. Anna Zubarev is a super talented Black Ink and digital artist. She is a cross-platform chain artist who sells artwork on ETH, Soul, and Tezos. As an ETH artist, she received the prestigious Hall of Fame artist status on Known Origin. Anna is also a phenomenal content creator who is followed by tens of thousands of followers who enjoy watching her mesmerizing process videos. She created four coloring books and is a source of wisdom and branding as an artist. Anna is a beloved and important leader in the Web3 community and a friend to so many. And with that, Giancarlo and I welcome Anna to the stage. Oh my God, what a <laughs> phenomenal introduction. I am blushing. For those of you that don't don't see me, I'm telling you, I am blushing all the way. Uh, Jennifer, thank you so much and John Carlo for this amazing opportunity to come here, introduce myself, share my story, where I come from, how my art journey has started. And, you know, be, to be here amongst friends gives me the most amazing value to share and just be myself continuously uh again it's it's pretty epic to be here knowing that so many friends have joined uh to support and listen more about me hear my uh, uh a little nasal <laughs> voice but hey oh, oh well it is what it is right <laughs> giggly maybe sometimes loud but that's just that um so Thank you. Thank you guys tremendously for this amazing opportunity to come here and share a story about myself. Oh, thank you so much, Anna. We really appreciate having you here. You're an awesome part of this community, a, a dear friend to, to many of us as well. And yeah, it's really an honor to, to have it and, and be able to, uh, to get to know more about you. So let's, let's maybe kick it off and maybe take like five minutes. Tell us a little bit more about your story, your upbringing, um, your journey, you know, so far, and how you eventually like discovered and entered this whole Web three space. Okay, so um, my journey has started. I, I don't even, technically it's a little bit weird to say that it started many years ago, but it fully I fully dived in only five years ago. But the way it started, so first and foremost, uh, I'm an immigrant. I was born in Belarus, uh, came here 30 years ago, lived in New York for 30 years, only two years ago, moved to the sunny state of Florida, loving life there, super amazing to, to just to live um, peacefully, no traffic, happy people that greet you, ma'am or sir, you know, it's pretty, pretty amazing. Um, so obviously English is not my first language. Russian is my mother tongue and we are, we do speak, um, you know, we speak Ronglish in the house with kiddos and, you know, our friends who are also multilingual people. Um, it's pretty amazing that I'm able to still speak my mother tongue and uh, teach the same that to teach that to my children and may, explain to them the importance of uh, knowing two languages um, and obviously the benefits of that. So back in the days in school days, I'm talking about like uh, probably high school days, even middle school, even though where I was born and grew up, we didn't have such uh what do you call this? The the break of the elementary. There was no mm -hmm. elementary school. There was no middle school. There was no high school. There was only first grade through twelfth grade. That's it. That's it. And most importantly, one of the best aspects of that school system: you start school first grade with the same people that you end up graduating. To me, that's by far so amazing because I'm still able to connect with my school buddies from back in belarus so i still mingle with them sometimes here and there and um you become long life friends with them as well so so during school days especially i'm not a math person i'm more i'm a liberal arts kind of a person you know i love history i love you know stuff that has to do with uh obviously history or just like uh literature if you will 
So math was never my favorite subject. So during math class, when I would be super bored, I would doodle. <laughs> I would doodle all sorts of different things. And uh, that was uh, pretty, uh, that, that was the way I would kind of contain myself during the class. Now, later in years, you know, when I was already working in corporate jobs and, they, you know, I would have to make phone calls, whatever, what, right? And we all know how customer service works. Sometimes you call customer service for certain issues. Even in your personal life, you call customer service, they put you on hold for like 20, 30, 40 minutes. Mm-hmm. And what do you do? You doodle. So that would be me as well. However, back in 2018, um, I was in this, um, I, I don't want to say dilemma, but I was in this kind of, really funky state of my life. Uh, And I don't want to say it was in depression either because it wasn't, but I was in a very funky state of my life. I did not know, you know, uh, when I, when I had my corporate job and I've, I've had, I've worked for over 15 years in the corporate world. I, um, I, I've had my second child and uh, my husband and I decided that I'll be stay at home mom. So in 2012, that's when my son was born. But in 2018, I was in transition where, you know, from 2012 up until 2018, I've built, I mean, I've learned anything and everything that has to do with social media. You know, I've blogged, I've created, you know, social media channels for myself and my name and the name for myself as well in the social media sphere that has to do with Pinterest because, you know, they used to call me a Pinterest queen. (laughs) <laughs> and uh Love it. interest guys is extremely under you know undervalued underappreciated platform it's not a social platform but it's a it's a seo platform it works exactly like google does and for those of you that are blogging that i know i know there's one particular person you know twisted chick i'm just saying you're blogging you know pinterest it would be the place for you to share your stuff on but anyways um so going back to my story of the art journey, so in 2018, I was, I was sick and tired of blogging about Pinterest. I was sick and tired of being just doing the, the, the thing that I was doing. It would, it would just not bring me joy. And, you know, I was having a conversation with a friend of mine uh, who also grew up with me in New York, uh, just like me, immigrant, who also Russian. And, you know, she kind of understood my, my pain points. And... Um, she asked me, why, why don't you create me such drawing in this style? I'm like, okay, hey, why not? You know, so that's when I looked down some a little digging. And I've always was fascinated with ink style, always fascinated with the pencil work. And funny thing is, even during my doodling days in class, or, you know, later in years, I will always just pick up my pencil or a pen and start drawing, just doodling some things, you know. Uh, I, I was never fascinated with creating human characters or any characters or, or animals. This was never a fascination for me. So it was just always a doodle for situations. So then I discovered from another friend of mine, uh, she first of all told me about these uh, fine liner pens that I need to use to create my drawings. And then she also suggested a book for me that I found on Amazon of the style, which I primarily use as an inspiration in my art, which called Zen Tangle. So I got myself that book and I'm like, hmm, let me see. This looks really fascinated. I mean, when you, for you guys as an art lovers, when you see something that you absolutely like, it just kind of takes your mind off. Like that's all you can see. This was that for me. So when I saw Zentangle movement and it's, it's meditational, therapeutical, some people just use it for that. For me, I just wanted to learn anything and everything. But I, again, I, the type of person in my life, I am a lot of times rebellious, right? I don't want to do what everybody else is doing. I always want to flow in my own style. So uh, I kind of like, okay, I picked up the style, but then I'm like, I don't want to repeat what these people are repeating. And it's very repetitive style that they do. And, you know, they use very tiny, like kind of like a square paper uh, 
paper sheets that where they fill it up with with that stuff. And I'm like, no, that's not what I want to do. I want to use elements from the Zentangle movement, but I want to kind of make it in my own way. And um, that's how my journey started it in November of 2018. Then I picked up, you know, I started to draw and I started to share that on my personal Facebook page. And then my other friend who also knows me, she suggested, my God, Anna, like your art should be created into coloring books. And I'm like, mm. ta-da, that was a light bulb moment for me right there and there. So I opened uh, an Instagram account in, in December of 2018, and I just started to share my stuff. And maybe six to eight months later, I began to receive some type of attraction from people on Instagram seeing uh better better kind of like uh achieve uh, not achievable I want to say better style uh I began becoming better of what I was sharing you know the key to success guys it's consistency and one of the questions I'm going to answer right now because I had to I had the chance to see questions in advance and I cannot help to answer that right now <laughs> that has to do with my success mm-hmm. on Instagram I can tell you and, this. And by guys. The way, I was just going to interject, so so people because people might not know this, but Anna has like over eighty five thousand followers on Instagram, which is you know no small feat. So she's she's a big deal over there, right? So and and I was curious to see like you know what has been the keys to to your success, right, in getting that kind of a of a following. I'm sure a lot of people here would would you know definitely want to know more about that. Yeah. So the way it worked for me in the, on Instagram, I began my first year on Instagram. It was literally every single day, Monday through Monday, each and every single day, consistently posting at the same time, each and every single day. Most importantly, you know, I did not know how to engage with these people. And I began searching, seeing how other people engage with others, right? That's another thing about social media, guys, and that has that that can be replicated on Twitter as well. But you don't need to reinvent the wheel, guys. We we not rocket sciences here, right? See how others are doing. See and pay attention. Try to replicate success. You know, model model it in your own way, right? So that's how it began work working for me as well i started to post first year on instagram it was literally seven days a week at the same time my hours were like 9 to 10 a.m each and every day right no breaks obviously sharing stories about my life about my drawings my work in progress videos everything i was showing literally everything and then some up until I created one particular drawing that completely this this was like a breakthrough for me on Instagram that got me my first 1500 likes and I was holy moly that got me <laughs> so excited I was like as as I was as if I won a million dollars I'm telling you this was how excited I was and I'm like okay and then I started to research more and continue to Create in the similar style that that particular drawing got me the most likes and obviously comments. And from then on, I continued to do what I was doing. And then Instagram created Reels, which was two years ago. And I'm like, I'm not good at, I'm not, I don't want to say I'm not good at the video. I mean, I could talk for days, for hours. For those of you that don't, do know me, I can talk for days. I'm a chatterbox. But, um, I never understood what it is that I was going to say on that video particularly, right? And I'm like, if I'm not going to talk in a video, I'm just going to basically start streaming my video drawings. And that's what I also started to do as well. So that also helped me a lot with uh, increasing my views and visibility on Instagram. And then again, Reels, when Reels picked up, guys, I swear to God, all I did was record my process my process in either 30 seconds 60 seconds or 90 seconds and i shared it on on the platform and most importantly i did not use trending sounds that's another key takeaway guys for you i did not want to use those the those sounds that did not rhyme with me i'm I'm a more classical soul, right? And another question from you guys, I'm obsessed with 
cinematic music, obsessed. If you if you can imagine right now, guys, you're watching Gladiator movie. The music created for that movie was by the most amazing composer, Hans Zimmer, right? So this is the type of music I started to listen to. And when I listen to that music on Spotify, the beauty of Spotify, it actually suggests other artists. And I've discovered since then so many more that helps me stay in the tune of um, creating process. You know, I could never create when I'm sad or I'm just like not in the mood. But I do, I have created a process for myself where it is always after 9 p.m., you know, when no one is bothering me, when I don't have to cook, when I don't have to clean, when I don't have to do anything for anybody. Uh, just saying, being a mom of two, <laughs> Jen, can I get an amen? Amen. <laughs> amen. So for me, that was that. So my my best working, uh, my best creative working hours is after 9 p.m. until midnight. So that's why sometimes on Twitter, you don't ever see me much uh, during those hours on Twitter. Uh, my best working hours on Twitter is the morning time. You know, that's when I, you know, I pre- when I when I share my content content to to uh, Instagram, TikTok. Pinterest, and of course, uh, Twitter, of course. Twitter is my beloved platform now. Think about it. Like, I've had Twitter since 2013, and I've never understood how this platform worked up until two years ago when uh, a friend of mine who is here today, Jason Chambers, thank you very much, Jason, for introducing me to the space, uh, for the NFT space. That's how my journey began. Jason Chambers uh, called me up on it and she's like, Anna, he's like, Anna, you got to join it. And this was in February of 2021 when me and him had a conversation, right? He said, you have to join. And I regret till today that I did not do that in February of 2021. And I only joined in August of 2021. I had a really big excuse. We were in a process of moving from New York to Florida. So that's why I could never do that during those times. But I always say whatever happens, happens for the best. Hopefully I've answered a lot of questions. <laughs> you have, yeah. So, um, yeah, there was a lot of things where I was like, oh, I wanted to interject, but I'm like, no, let, let me let her keep going because, you know, you were like on a roll and, and so much good good information. But regarding like the whole entering into Web3, right? So, so it was actually Jason uh, who, who actually told you about it, like, oh, you need to make like NFTs and, and get into this space. And then you, you know, you're moving. And you said, okay, like, I can't do that right now. And then, so what made you then, like in August, be like, all right, now I'm, uh, you know, was it, you know, Jason, other people that kind of told you, like, all right, you so, definitely got to do this. And <laughs> so once, once we moved, we moved to our house in July of 2021. Once we were more or less settled in the house, and I'm like, okay, let me, let's say, this is it. This is time to crunch up, you know. And this is the time when I joined and. I well went all in in the NFT space, and of course, I started to follow same people that Jason was following. That's that's another thing about you know replicating success, mm-hmm. guys. When you wanna when you wanna set yourself apart from, I don't want to say majority, but how you how do you set yourself apart is you want to follow people that successful people have been following. That's how you get around successful people and if you want to learn from successful people follow who they follow that's another big big takeaway for you uh that's what i've been doing you know and obviously the people that i've met uh due to the fact that jason introduced me to those people was absolutely incredible like i i can't i can't even imagine to start thinking about it how many people like Gabe Wise was one of those people that I've met. I honestly think um, uh, Matias from uh, Argentina, I cannot pronounce his username. Jennifer can help me with that. Hielo <laughs> oh, That's the one. Yep. I love his he, work. Yeah. He, I, I adore him tremendously. He's He's been so much help she has been so much help to me right now like uh onboarding me on tazo excuse me on the object using tazos he was the biggest help to me because i was literally growing more gray hairs trying to figure it out object 
even though right now I know how object works, but growing patience with switching screen, like refreshing screen and whatnot. Like I'm not used to that delay website situation. So uh, I'm, I'm, I love known origin and you know, when gas went through the roof, we all kind of had to do what we had to do and diversify in uh, different coins. And I'm actually very happy, very happy that we were able to do that. And thank you to Matias to, to introducing me to um, Tezos. Uh, uh, Chaz, uh, who is also here in the room, he asked me to join Fulana, and I've done that as well before, before uh, Tezos. And, uh, but somehow I like Tezos better than Fulana coin. <laughs> so, Solana works faster than Object, mm -hmm. but I like Tezos. I like the convenience. I like that I'm able to buy from so many people and so fast. Most importantly, I can buy it without crazy gas fees. Like, I don't even know if we should all go back to Ethereum. Honestly, I mean, Ethereum is great. I'd love to come back to it, but I don't see that happening anytime soon. Like right now, it's 23 guay. Why would I want to pay that? You know what I mean? I so think it's kind of bizarre. But. I wanted to just quick shout out to Jason, Ieloho, Camila, Matias, and Chaz for all their contributions that they've done to get you to this point. Um, I have a question for you uh, that I've been curious to pick your brain about. As a content creator in this age of like daily technological advances, especially with like AI tools and different programs, would you recommend, um, what would you recommend to other artists who want to be more effective with their marketing and branding as far as tools that they could use? That's a great question, Jen. That's a very great question. Number one, be willing to research. That's number one. Be willing to step out of your comfort zone, YouTube it. Again, Pinterest is my go-to resource. If you like to read, definitely Pinterest would be that. Obviously YouTube, but my go-to resource on learning anything and everything right now is TikTok because nobody has an hour to learn things right now. So I go on TikTok and I get it in, I don't know, a minute or two, basically one, two, three kind of a lesson. Now, when it comes to tools, my number one go-to tool for marketing, for creating banners or creating anything that, I, let's say, even collages, I will use Canva, C-A-N-V-A dot com. This, this is the most epic tool for marketing that has been created, and I've been using it ever since 2013, actually. Yeah, same it's here. Been around. I, I, I actually got a, a subscription for it or whatever, and it is it is amazing. Like, I mean, it is so easy to use. I mean, I created tons of, like, graphics, stuff for, like, for these shows. I mean, it, I love it, too. It's such a good tool. I'm fr I, I mean, I want to quickly say I'm frugal like that. I don't pay for stuff <laughs> unless I must pay for that. So... <laughs> Canva, so the, the, the thing around Canva is this. You can use for free, right? But then if you need to upload your your own uh, fo photos or imagery, which is fine, but you could also use royalty-free imaging, right? Let's say you want to create a blog post and you want to use an image that could be related to that. You go to royalty-free images, right? Uh, Pixabay, I think. Or, I mean, there's you can just Google royalty-free images website and you can download them for free. Not only that, because of AI technology, you can just basically create your own right now. I'm just saying. <laughs> I've had the pleasure as well to play around with AI so I can be in the known and understand how that technology works. And I, I, I love it. Uh, not that I want to create my own collection with that, but, you know, I'm happy to buy other AIs because I'm fascinated with it. Like just a few weeks ago, Chaz posted something fabulous and I'm like, holy moly, this is amazing. I need to have it. And it was a beautiful landscape of a city, beautifully color colored and whatnot. So it was just this was music to my ears. So I'm happy, you know, when I can snack someone else's AI uh, piece. And, you know, um, the way I look at AI is I personally use it to help me with my captions. So going back to Instagram, that's another takeaway. I use OpenAI, which is part of ChatGPT. 
Uh, I actually pay for that because I need to make sure it gives me everything that I need. So OpenAI has given me ability to expand on my thoughts, right? English is not my first language and and I'm not the best copywriter. Let's just say I know how, how, how copywriting works, but I'm not best at it. But OpenAI helps me with my descriptions, right? It helps descriptions that I create for my for my NFTs, right? And uh, it, it's it's a huge help because like it would used to take me an hour to to write. It takes me I don't know five ten minutes right now. So it's definitely helping me tremendously to do so as well. So Canva is great with creating collages, infographics, creating even video formats of sort. I'm sure you can create, you know, video editing. It has uh, website templates as well. I mean, guys, you, you, whatever you can think of, whatever it is you may need for the web web two or three, Canva has that. So, um, and OpenAI is my best go-to source right now. Um, everything else I do on all my videos for for my Instagram TikToks, I always do them on my phone through Instagram. I don't need to use any fancy equipment. I don't have time for that. Basically, um, I do have uh, I do own a um, D- DSLR camera, but again, ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, no, that's awesome. And so, so much good, good advice and tips. And I really appreciate that. And I mean, yeah. And I think some of, yeah, some of the tools you mentioned, like I said, like Canva is one that I use. I, I think the open AI has also been like a game changer for me as well for like so many different uses. And yeah, I think it's just all these things are helping everybody to just become more, more effective, more efficient, you know, especially cause we all have limited time, so many things going on. So you got to find ways to just be more efficient and get more, more work done with less time. So no, I love it. Uh, and I, I kind of wanted to pivot a little bit, like with the next question and kind of uh, talk a little bit more about like your art, right. And the, the style, right. So you have a very like distinct style of, of artwork, right. And you described it as like, um, and, and actually in, uh, twisted chicks, uh, blog as well, right. You described it like as a combination of like intuitive drawing elements from the Zentangle method you explained earlier, but also really incorporating a lot of your own like free flowing elements. And there's also like very notable things like a lot of use of florals, uh, you know, making it all, you know, black and white. Uh, I was curious if you could tell us a little bit more about how you like arrived at and how you've evolved your style, right. And how you kind of like continue to like progress on it and, and, uh, and build on it to what it is today. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I am a big nature freak lover uh i love flowers i've always loved flowers ever since i can remember and obviously my mom has been my biggest inspiration in flowers we you know ever since i can remember when i was a little girl we always had flowers in the inside of the apartment right and probably i was influenced by her intentionally i don't know how but um and uh nature I love spending time outdoors, going for walks. And uh, sometimes I just don't have time to post a lot of pictures, but I do love nature. I love exploring, just even going for a walk around the neighborhood, which I do each and every single day. I live in a very beautiful place right now where I... In, in in the backyard of my house, all I see is trees, right? Big pine trees. That's all I see. Luckily, we chose that house because I did not want to see anyone else in my backyard besides the trees. I don't want to see no neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> you know, go, leaving New York City where I lived in Brooklyn, right? I always walked around, you know, where I lived in South Brooklyn in Chipsa Bay. Uh, I was 10 minutes walking distance from the water. So my morning routines would always be, you know, taking kids to the school and then taking a walk around the canal, Sheepshead Bay Canal, right, where on the Emmons Avenue is Jennifer Nows. And uh, th- this is where I got my morning kind of like, th- this was my drug of a choice, honestly, going and inhaling fresh water view, seeing water views, inhaling the water, right? And uh, right now in Florida, I don't have water views. I have trees and we we do have certain, what do you call those? Uh, preserved 
ponds. I call them fake ponds. <laughs> yeah, the ponds are <laughs> Right. Um, so I do have that ability to go and walk around the neighborhood, take a bike. I, I'm a big bike lover. We've, we've gotten bikes, for, I don't know, I want to say like five years ago. My husband and I flew to a conference uh, to San Diego. And then um, we, rented, we ended up renting bikes. And ever since then, we came back home and was like, that's it. We have to buy bikes. So we bought bikes. And but in, again, back in Brooklyn, like you can't just take your bike on the street. You, you, that's a hell to the no, because <laughs> that's dangerous. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> yeah. So right now I literally walk into my garage, open the garage, set on my bike, put all my music in my ears put on my shades, put my hat on, and I'm off for 30, 40 minutes writing. Thank you, Jennifer, by the way, for sharing uh, my sketchbook um, that I shared yesterday. This was a sketchbook tour that took. So I'm going to quickly jump since I saw this now, and I'm going to switch topics quickly, and then I'll come back to it. But I, I, I feel like it's so important to say this because so. I do love flower, florals, right? And I do love creating each and every single day. I've been drawing every single day for the past five years, guys. I kid you not. Five years, each and every single day, unless I'm on vacation or unless we are traveling somewhere. That's the only time when I'm not creating. Even right now, we rented this Airbnb in Pennsylvania and we are staying in Poconos. We're actually finally going back home on Sunday. I cannot wait. So. Uh, I'm drawing digitally. I'm not creating as much physical pieces because I just, I'm not comfortable on the, on this desk and this really uncomfortable chair, but that's okay. You know, the struggle is real. Um, uh, anyways, uh, so I cannot wait to go back home and start drawing physical pieces as well. So for the past month, I've been only digitally drawing now. Ever since I started in November of 2018, I've created 12 sketchbooks. Each sketchbook has 60 pages. So now you kind of know, and I have created, you know, sketchbook tours for each and every single sketchbook that I've done, which is on my Instagram. Now, the one that I've shared yesterday, which which was is a short version of it, like re-edited version. Um, from Instagram, it took nine seconds of this video to watch, uh, and um, uh, but it took eight months to create. Usually, that's what it takes for me to create each sketchbook. Thank you, Jennifer, for sharing this. My eyes was already like this. <laughs> oh, that was that was Giancarlo, but yeah. Oh, Giancarlo, my apologies. It's, it's amazing. It's like good, when yeah. you said that, I was like, man, the time lapse really is deceiving because that's impressive. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, the thing also about social media, like I would love to share slower, you know, how many times I've been asked to share, you know, tutorials or slow, slow versions of my videos. It takes me guys hours upon hours to create each drawing. There is no way, no how. You know, I have created time like hyper time lapses Mm -hmm. where it takes me about an hour to create a drawing. So for those of you who are watching this through a restream, so I've created this a few days ago. So beautiful. (laughs) And it took me about, I want to say, two hours to create this, right? Which which is only half a page, right? I did not fill in the rest. I did make some videos from it, like glimpse it, but... A few, few weeks ago, Chaz had visited me and I've created a drawing physical piece for him, especially because I felt like this was really important for me to give something of myself to him because he's been so given to me. And this was, you know, I love giving gifts, right? It gives me the pleasure to give gifts, you know? Uh, I had the pleasure. So, to, so when I was creating that, drawing for Chaz, I actually created a hyper time lapse, which is on my Instagram as well. So what it what took me an hour to create, I re I edited that for one minute. So that way you can see more. But again, 
it's not possible for me to create short versions or long long versions. Nobody's gonna sit down and watch it for an hour. I, I promise you, it's gonna be very boring. So this is so, an attention uh, economy. People don't really, I don't know. As much as I would love that to be able to like do it, it's just not possible. I did have a question about. Um, Fl your flowers. I know you love nature and you're known for the floral art. Do you have actually like a favorite flower? Um, I do, but yeah. I've not, I never drew that actually. That, well, I did, but kind of. I, mm -hmm. I, I, have, I, I have a huge love for peony and I have a huge love for tulips. I really love those flowers. I love roses, but my biggest love goes to tulips unfortunately peonies only bloom once a year and where we live in florida they don't bloom that's 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 a sad part that's just what it is when i lived in new york we had a second house in upstate house in upstate new york i had a whole place of peonies one day and I'll, I'll need to just text you a picture um but I do love peonies a lot. Uh, they just there's just something so special about them, and I think it is very special because they only bloom once a year. Yeah, I agree. The thickness of the tulip and then the peony is just such a fluffy, just beautiful flower. Yeah, yeah I, lots of and lots of perfume have them. Perfumes have actually been made from peonies. Oh. Not only that, with in where we live now, I have magnolia trees everywhere. And that, that is incredible smell. Like, I mean, I need to start drawing more of that. But again, going back to drawings, like I like to just go with the flow. I don't ever want to force myself creating something that would be too difficult or too complicated. I just want to go with the flow and just let it out basically let it all out, you know, let my emotions or let my feelings on the paper, you know, uh, kind of go with that and never kind of take um, maybe too much attention on even sketching in advance. And I, I don't know if you guys noticed it, but I don't ever sketch in advance. I, I, mm -hmm. I, I also, the, I'm just too, honestly, I just don't have time for that. I just, I actually, develop my skills where I will be able to draw just using pen. I do make mistakes, but I try to kind of fix them. So, I see. Uh, and so on the topic, I said, you, do you never like use any kind of like reference or something like that? Is it literally just like you're creating the flowers and based on like first, how you, mm -hmm. first, first two, first two years I use the tangle referencing. And then I, because I would draw them so many times, it kind of memory, it stayed in my memory. So everything that I draw, draw right now, it comes from my memory right now. It, I don't ever look at screen. Sometimes to get new ideas, I go back to my old drawings. Mm -hmm. And because you could never replicate the same thing that you created before, I don't know if you ever noticed that something new comes up from that and that's how my style evolves because and again not to twit my own horn but every single drawing you see you'll know that's my style you you'll instantly know absolutely it's it's very unique and thank you for answering that um that question about the flowers because i was curious if you know there was um one that you liked and to know that that doesn't make it in there is is very interesting and the explanation as to why i really like that because for you it's really about that flow and that kind of like goes into my next question so although flowers are the focal point in your art there's also a lot of patterned geometric elements and lines in your art that remind me of like balance and flow can you explain why you chose to combine the two it's really difficult to explain john it really is i just enjoy creating such elements and that comes from my doodling days I, I'll have to find a doodling drawing or actually make one for you. Well, for you or just to show a reference, the type of doodling I used to make on repeat all the time. So I think that it comes from that kind of probably unconsciously, uh, 
from my conscience, right? Um, I don't want to say I like to use rough elements, right, or geom geometrical is, uh, in particularly. I like to use a lot of dots. I like to, I do love using a lot of line work as well. Uh, that just gives me this tremendous satisfaction. You know, it's like, you have maybe a widget of sort, right? Like you just imagine you have a widget, you're holding it in your hand and you keep basically fidgeting with it, right? Well, that's me with my repeated designs, right? So that that comes from that, creating that satisfactory moment for myself when I'm drawing these line after line after line. And I'm sure you've seen such pieces that I have created where there's so many line works with elements of dot work and just other floral petals or leaves, you know, um, I like to integrate that with that. Those are my favorite, favorite things to create. I also have created mandalas before, so I actually created them on a physical, physical and it, they're not easy to create because you'll need special tools for that. I forgot what the name of it. You use them in ge geometry class, I think. You know, one of those. At the, but is it the protractor, maybe? Like protractor. Probably. Protractor. And I also use this. What do you call this? Protractor. I think that's, yeah. yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. I brought it with me in case I wanted to, you know, create something, but I didn't. But another tool, actually, it's really, it's my go to number one that that I use to create my digital drawings. It's my it it my Procreate app. Most of you know about it. So that's where I create my digital drawings. And the way it happens for me is uh, I upload an image of my physical drawing and I redraw it because I don't I don't want to play around with scanner because what a lot what when when I re kind of resketch my drawings digitally, it allows for me to expand on it and it create it allows for me to create more depth maybe or it creates more kind of like a better version of the physical piece. So um, if you have seen my physical drawings, which you can compare to my digital ones, you'll know there's a, a tiny bit of difference, but I think digital drawings come up to be so much more um, better in so many different ways. Yeah, I love that explanation and it makes a lot of sense. Like you really can hone in once you have it on that Procreate app. So yeah. yeah. And I love the pin tweet that Giancarlo just put, the spirit blooms. Mm -hmm. Phenomenal, the way that that flows. And I could see how you, how you mentioned um, about the mandala. Like I can see how that would correlate um, to the design and flow patterns. It's very lovely. Thank you. I'm going to share it here on the on the stream as well. <laughs> Um, and yeah, Thank you so much. and I think that the next thing I wanted to ask you about, Anna, so I, you, you're one of those artists that I feel like has done, especially in like this Web3 space, like more collaborations than almost like anybody else I've, I've come in contact with, maybe except for like some people that do maybe like open ones and a lot of people will, will create stuff, but like those kind of like planned, you know, collaborations, like you've done so many of those. And I've, I've found like it's, it is so cool to see that. And how like you know the the styles and the things like come together and it's it's such a beautiful thing. It's, and I was really curious um, because you've done so many like you know if you could maybe talk to us a little bit about what have been some of your, your favorite collaborations where you think you know it really was just a, a, an awesome you know combination of styles. And also, is there if there's any particular artist that like you admire in the space that you haven't collaborated with and you would love to maybe collaborate with in the future. Well, that's a great question. And actually, I was looking forward to answering it this <laughs> because, because collaborations is my middle name. <laughs> so one of the best reasons why I love collaborating is because, oh my God, it gives me the, 
it gives me an open door kind of into the artist world who I'm collaborating with. It give, it, it's like putting a puzzle together, right? So initially it was not as easy to collaborate and like I would have to think so much so hard how am I gonna make it make it work, right? Um, but I think I have not I need to start count you know, of how many collaborations I've done. And I want to say easily between 40 and 50, easily, easily. And I have two more coming up. You know, I have one that dropped this morning with M. Pozeko. He is amazing to collaborate with, by the way. For those of you that want to collaborate for the first time, please reach out to him. I'm telling you guys, you will not regret it. He is a phenomenal human being. He He's a Turkish artist. He is so easy to work with. One of my favorite people, one of my favorite people that I've collaborated with, and that story is a story that I could tell forever and mm -hmm. ever and ever. Mr. Alisa Bat. He's my favorite one. So last November, as I remember, I was on Twitter. I was tweeting uh, actually with someone. I've had uh, one of my other collectors uh, from Ethereum uh, reached out to me. He was like, he actually didn't reach out to me. He actually tweeted it out on Sabat's tweet saying like, it would be amazing if Anna Zuberov can collaborate with you. And I'm like, oh, oh, hold the phone, hold the phone. My jaw dropped and I'm like, I was shaking. You know when you have that, moment when you have someone who you admire so tremendously so that was that moment for me when that guy kind of tweeted it out and i'm like okay let me do this quickly because if i'm not gonna do it quickly it nothing will ever happen so uh i basically responded on that tweet saying oh my god that would make my year not even not even a day i said it would make my year if I could have a chance to collaborate with you, collaborate with you, Sabat, right? And then I also in instantly send him a private message saying, "Hey, Sabat, I've been admiring you for so many, you know, for so many years that I've been on the space, and it would give me the most amazing opportunity if I, if, if you will give me the most amazing opportunity if I can collaborate with you." So he actually responded and tweeted out as well at the same time. I guess he was online and available. He was like, absolutely, with honor. He said that. I actually screenshotted that and I saved it on my desktop <laughs> to commemorate awesome. that moment. This was actually so epic. So... Then we, you know, DM'd each other. You know, I sent him a piece. Um, I actually shared a few notes about that drawing uh, that I shared on Twisted Chicks blog. I don't know if you guys read it, but it's that line work, minimalistic mm -hmm. work that actually Sabet used to create the collaboration that me and him had. So then, obviously, I was never going to ask Sabet how much are we pricing it at, uh, what not, when, where, what. I'm like, I'm going to go with the flow. I'm just going to, you know, tune in and pay attention and learn, if anything. So then he was like, okay, this is what we're doing. This is where we're dropping. Ba -ba 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 -ba. You, you're going to mint that. I'm like, okay, on it, right? So uh, we dropped 25 pieces, 25 editions, excuse me. I remember it was $140 each, whatever the Ethereum at the time was. This was the biggest amount that I could ever fathom. But again, this is Sabat. I was never going to ask any questions, right, or doubt myself. So literally that 25 editions was sold out in 24 hours. That was the most prolific wow. and epic moment of my life. By the way, Chaz, who's listening, he, <laughs> he was one of those collectors who collected that because he is a big fan of Sabet. I'm a huge fan of his as well. I have collect I've had ability to collect some of his editions work on Ethereum. I've collected some of his uh, by the way guys, for those of you you need to pay attention. I'm just saying <laughs> 
Sabat, Sabat has Tezos collection mm-hmm. and it, it's in editions. Please go look him up, go grab him because it's affordable. And I, I don't know why I keep getting offers on his pieces that are way below. Like, I don't know. I wish I could just DM those people and just like tell them like, what the hell are you people thinking? This is Sabat. <laughs> This is so bad, you know, like you can't just do that. But that's what I think. I think this was one of the most epic collaborations I've had to date. I mean, of course, I've collaborated, you know, with um, with Carlos, right? We have a piece still available on non-origin, one-on-one piece. I'm just saying, throwing it out there. Uh, had oh, yeah, that one is actually the- really cool. I, I remember that I piece. Know. Yeah, yeah. Super, super cool. I know. And then gas went through the roof. So we're like, uh, you know, you know, I'm working on a collaboration with Luca. I'm actually 90% done. I'm working on collaborating uh, for the second time with Yuzapata. I love that guy to pieces. I don't know why, but something makes me always reach out to him and kind of like give him, you know, my support. I love that dude. He's, He's amazing. Uh, so for the second time of collaborating with him, I just we just finished collaborating with uh, Freakland Mama Newly Fair. She is amazing. Um, I've collaborated with uh, with Matthias five times, and I'm working on my sixth piece. Thank you very much. It's gonna be butterflies all over the place. I'm just saying. Hint, oh, hint. Jenny, it's gonna be all over that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's another thing I actually need to implement more into my work is to create more um, butterflies, I think. Uh, But again, I don't want to do what everybody else are doing. So I'm kind of like holding my forces a little bit. I've collaborated so many times. I think, hold on. I mean, I want to say three or four times with Jason Chambers and each and every time we've collaborated, it was just amazing. amazing um i'm trying to open my collaboration page so i can tell um you know, it's funny on. i think almost every person you've mentioned has been i don't know maybe except for like two has been a guest on our show but so I, it looks like i need to get matias and maybe M. Poseco to, to come on here as well but yeah, um, yeah we've had oh you must you must that. yeah a lot of the ones you've mentioned you must yeah you must i've collaborated with M. Poseco. i don't know I've lost count how many times I've collaborated with him. Um, I've co- collaborated with uh, Abel from Mexico. I don't know his last name. Um, but uh, that that piece finally sold out. And I don't know, it took like eight months to do that. But I'm, I'm so thrilled to share that that finally sold out. So uh, Seeking Sonia, I've collaborated with my BFF. <laughs> on the space and in, and on the on the phone, Jillian, Suzanne, Summer, uh, you know, uh, Jillian, Suzanne, I love that girl. We, me and her, awesome. oh my god, <laughs> she is amazing. I know. Me and, and her talk every and day. She did recently do a collaboration with Sabet too that is just spectacular too. It is such an awesome piece. I, I just have to. It like really that. is. <laughs> it really is. I know. You guys must go and check it out. Jillian's uh, collaboration with Sabet. She makes editions, and uh, I know uh, she has still few available. So, wanted to point that M. Pazeco is in the house. Yeah, he yeah I know. Him. Welcome, brother. Oh, great. All right. Well, uh, Jenny, you want to go to your next question? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I wanted to ask you what has been one of your favorite Web3 memories? Oh, there's so many of them. I think I've just highlighted one of collaborating with Sabat and Matthias and Jason. And uh, honestly, I think uh, going to uh, Art Basel was one of those highlights when I got to meet Eddie Ganglin, when I got to meet um, Gabe Weiss. Uh, that was pretty uh, uh, epic. But honestly, the way the way I look at it, guys, I, the way I treat um, um, Web3 space is definitely I am amongst friends. I am happy to share about my art. I am honestly, it gives me it gives me goosebumps each and every time when somebody gives me this 
these compliments on my work. And just to think that five years ago, I was not even where I am today, right? Taking, taking, I don't want to say I'm not a risk taker, but taking steps towards to getting to where I am today has been very impactful. And most importantly, my daughter, for those of you that, that don't know, and for those of you that do know, I have a 16 year old. She's incredibly talented. She is a Oh my God, like I am nowhere near an artist that she is. And um, I'm, I really am not only doing this for myself, but I definitely am hoping to inspire my daughter to take important steps in life when you take, when you take action, t- action steps towards to getting to where you want to be, right? That's my biggest goal in life is to make sure for my daughter to do what she loves to do and get paid for it, right? I really want to inspire her so one day she can do what she loves and get paid for it. My son, he's into soccer. He's 12, so I I don't know. He still has fuzzies in his head, so I don't know. (laughs) Moments you've had in in Web3. Um, I think the other thing that we were curious about was, you know, you have uh, four coloring books on Amazon, uh, which feature your beautiful, you know, black and white illustrations. And we were kind of curious, like how you got the idea, you know, for coloring books, you know, how did that come to you? And what do you usually hope that people gain by using your adult coloring books? Right. So right in the beginning of my story, I said, remember one of my friends, when I just started it in 2018, they inspired me to, they actually gave me an idea to start creating my art into and make a coloring book out of that and uh, i release coloring books once a year so right now i have four and currently i already have 30 drawings that i've prepared um for my fifth coloring book which i still need to come up with the name now the feedback that i'm getting from the people mostly on instagram because that's my audience that's who i'm trying to um um that's my targeted audience, if you will, on Instagram, who I'm targeting and trying to kind of like use drawing or coloring for therapy. Because when I'm drawing, I, I'm in this very therapeutic state. I am so calm, like nothing can get nothing bothers me, nothing kind of annoys me. And I'm not the most patient person, right? Funny thing is, like I can spend countless countless hours if i don't have nothing to do or any responsibilities um uh i'm able to uh sit down and draw for hours upon hours upon hours right but again i do have responsibilities but the state i become extremely like mesmerized by in just just in the process very involved in the process so um the feedback that i get from people is like it's very therapeutic for them right and uh, whether one whether they want to just uh use it for therapy or whether they want to just color because they enjoy coloring or you know have a hobby of that and there's a whole movement of people that love to just color right and i as much as i appreciate colors in my life and i do like vibrant colors hello basin on my nails right um i have uh fuchsia nails right now and uh, i love bright colors but it gives me the most satisfaction when i'm just creating black and white and as many times as people have some friends have suggested for me to add colors it's just like it just doesn't work for me it it comes out so immaturely and poorly done. I'm like, maybe one day, not today. Today is not that day, but one day. You know, I'm not give. I'm not saying no, but I'm not saying yes right now. So, yeah. whoever is considering, you know, buying my coloring books, it's not that expensive. It's super affordable, probably as much as Tezos, uh editions, right? Um, and uh, you'll have access to between 40 to 50 drawings, not physicals, but, you know, all digitized drawings in one coloring book. Basically, each and every coloring book has 
one year's worth of my work, right? In the past two years that I've been digitizing it, my work became so much more cleaner, right? Much more kind of professionally even looking like because I'm able to digitize it. So um, I think that give the ability of digitizing my physical pieces gives me a better way to learn and study how everything works in my in my world. And um, I'm continuing to progress and I'm continuing to learn and develop new skills. So that way this the 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 sky is still no long is not the limit for me right there's so much more that i want to develop in my own drawings and most importantly i want to learn to animate them like m plus echo does i want to add a glitch effect like matias just did in his drops i'm just saying i want to learn a lot i want to learn everything that inspires me Mm -hmm. and maybe implement it in my work one day um one day at a time, guys, one day at a time. But I'm very happy when I'm collaborating with other people, with other friends or artists, that the the way my art looks, right? Again, going back to what M. Pazeko does is next level. How he animated my works, it's just like, holy moly, bajoli. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm looking at it and I'm mesmerized by it. So um, that gives me crazy vibes. So I love it. That's I'm awesome. super excited to see the new stuff that you do, like once you learn all of those techniques. But I really like that you stay true to your black and white because I feel like although like prob- I, I, I would imagine that your skill level with color is phenomenal too because you're just a really good artist. But if, stop, no, stop being so modest. Um, but like if it's not broke, why fix it, right? Like if this is the thing that you are so good at, then if I, it works, exactly. If it works, exactly. why do I need to use what everybody else is doing so yeah. good, right? For ex- for example, like uh, Matias's coloring is incredible. Like why would I need to do that if he's already doing it? Like I want to stick to my guns, if you will, right? Like I want to stick what works for me, and I want to continue to develop my skills in a way, and maybe implement different uh, elements in a way that it can be even more like mesmerizing to look at because for me when i'm spending countless hours on detailing my works that's my favorite part of the process and i always say that because when i'm detailing my artworks because you know outlining it maybe takes minutes but then when you detail detailing it right it takes hours. It really, really does. To me, when I can spend hours upon hours on detailing my works, that gives me even more satisfaction. Yeah, and no, that's a good point there about, you know, playing to your strengths, doing the things that you love, you know, and leading into that, I think is, is so important. I, I was actually kind of curious, just as a follow on question to the book thing, um, that like, if, have you ever actually been able to see from followers and people that have like bought the books and filled them in, like then sending you pictures of like, oh, here's how I colored your artwork and all that. I'm just curious because I think that would be really cool to like see like, oh, yes. how would they add color to it? And, you know, just to, to kind of see that. They certainly have sent me, oh my God. And I saved it actually. Uh, on my Instagram, they're saved stories. And I always screenshot and share that and make sure to tag them in there that like oh my god like that looks amazing um like i'm not gonna name names right now because twitter audience will not know them or uh vice versa instagram audience Mm -hmm. will not realize right but i have several people that have sent me how they've colored them one one girl in particular actually she lives in texas she is ukrainian she sent me her uh coloring of those pages and i'm like holy moly like that is next level like i could never do that even even when jillian actually she bought me she bought my coloring book Mm -hmm. she sent me her coloring and i know she has coloring uh she she the way she's done her coloring is incredible she way the way she co- colors even her own art for me is next level like i could never do that i could never match up on those colors so that's why i stick to my guns i stick what gives me the most pleasure of creating and one day maybe like i'm say, i'm not saying no to this today but i'm just saying today is not that day <laughs> <laughs> 
I love it. Um, and by the way, I was, I was going to mention that this week you made yourself a new fan because I showed uh, sometimes my, my wife helps me put like for the, the PO apps, the stuff into like a template and she's really good with like graphic design. And so sometimes she'll comment on the artist and she was like, this is really good. Like, what is this artwork? And I'm like, oh, it's it's Anna. She's awesome. She's got like, a huge following on Instagram. She's like, all right, I'm going to go. <laughs> I'm going to go check out her work or whatever. And she happens to also like really love coloring. So I was like, all right, I, I may have to get her the, the new coloring book when you come out with it. So, uh, well, you don't have to wait for the new right, one. Yeah, the new one. Get... The, wait, hold on. The new one always comes up right during or right after thanksgiving uh, that's okay. my timeline so okay. i'll wait for so it. get the old you one can and get... then the new one later for christmas maybe <laughs> <laughs> trust me it will not break your bank i promise you it will not break your bank get the fourth coloring book it has the most uh digital like every single drawing in it is digitized and like the first coloring book i'm thinking about it actually of uh redoing it from scratch because actually funny thing is I, I have not been promoting my very first coloring book but till to date it gives me the most sales i don't know why i don't know how but it gives me the most sales so i'm thinking i need to redo each and every single page i believe there's like 37 drawings in there so i just need to figure it out how to redo it and you know cr maybe create you know not recreate it but uh, like basically redraw it and give people a better uh version of um first coloring book cool yeah like new new edition yeah. of the of the existing one or something like that yeah new yeah hands right? yeah no, that's awesome yeah so one other thing i wanted to know is i mean we talked about a lot of stuff you know growing on social media your art some of your inspiration what are you really passionate about outside of art and web three like what other stuff do you really mm. enjoy doing like outside of that and, and uh things that you're really passionate about gardening gardening biking traveling yep so i've had we we sold a house a year ago which was in upstate new york and we had two and a half acres in, of land in there i don't know if you can imagine how much is that that's a lot <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah. So I had a I had a garden in there. We would grow tomatoes, cucumbers, you know, veggies, whatnot, right? But the gardening season in upstate New York is very short lived, but like two months only. That's it. And then we would go back to New York City and everything kind of died. So when we moved to Florida, I decided to wait up until the moment when the nature will call upon me and just tell me, Anna, this is time to do gardening. But right now I'm devoting my time and my effort to to landscaping, to the front front lens hold on, how would you say this? To the landscape of the front house. There you go. So I recently bought and planted hibiscuses and planters. I've had added white gardenia. For those of you that don't know, look it up. It's the most beautiful and smelly flower. Even better smelling one than um than magnolia. So um I love flowers, so it gives me tremendous pleasure to to landscape the flowers and also months ago my i had to volunteer and help my neighbors to work on their landscapes so kind of like doing that volunteer moment also brought me lots of joy even though you know that the labor of gardening it's not easy trust me guys it is not easy to you know bend over and plant flowers or you know whatever whatnot so my second passion is obviously biking we love biking and uh the third one i love traveling oh my god if i can travel for a living please call on me i don't know uh, universe please call my name <laughs> i'd love to travel for a living so um when i travel we always uh i'm the one actually that make plan for each and every single day like uh remember when we went to paris 2018 this was oh my god it was for my birthday we planned every single day in one day we, we visited two castles i'm a big big fan of castles castles chateaus all those places that 
time kind of never leaves. And uh, I remember going to one particular chateau where uh, Medici, Marie Medici lived 500 years ago. I'm just saying 500 years ago. That's crazy. So walking into that chateau that, I don't know, whatever, Louis the Fourteenth. I don't know. I'm just. I'm just throwing the, the the. For example, Louis the Fourteenth, the King of France, back 500, 600 years ago, gifted gifted that chateau to her because she was his lover. I'm just saying. I know those were the days, right? And uh, <laughs> she was. She was actually. She was actually very evil. But in that chateau, the, this is this is the most magnificent part. Usually when you visit castles or chateaus, you have that very old smell in those places. And it's like, this is the biggest turn off. But the day when we were there, this was September, many different floral bouquets and arrangements were done in each room you step in. So when you step in into these rooms and you see how they, these people lived back in the days and you smell the freshness of the flowers, it kind of takes you back in those times and it helps you in that. Well, it helps me imagine, you know, the type of, I don't know, uh, the things that she was doing at the time when, you know, when people would be making a bet for her, right? Her, her uh, helpers, not, I don't know, what do you call not helpers? I don't want to say helpers, her staff, right? Her staff would be making a bet for her, right? Would cook for her. We like, we went, it, went into the kitchen. Obviously people of that, of that stature did not go to kitchens. They just go to the place where they would eat and they'd be served, right? But I'm a big fan of history as well. So, uh, I remember one particular story when in 2008 we visited London and we went to Tower of London and months before it, I read a book about alchemists, not the one alchemist that you can think about, but there was a different one alchemist. It's called, uh, it was Isaac Newton hmm. who actually worked in a gold coin of the, uh, uh, of the tower of London at the time. And he was actually managing gold. Co not only he was a scientist, right? But he also managed the money. He was a banker at the time. He was managing coins coin production at the Tower of London. So that was pretty epic. You know, this is when you can put two and two together, kind of like when you read a book and then you actually get to visit a place. So that what gets me always super excited about history and what happened during the times. And uh, obviously, uh, Eastern European history is extremely important to me. And I'm learning each and every single day so I can pass it on to my children. Because, you know, one of my favorite quotes is, before we know where we're going, we could never forget where we came from. So I'm always humble because of that. No, that's a great quote. And I, I'm, a, I'm also a huge fan of, of traveling. Like, I absolutely love it. And thankfully, I've had the privilege and, you know, of being able to travel to like a lot of places in my life, both, be, you know, with family or with work and other things like that. But I, I absolutely love it. So I will definitely maybe have to hit you up <laughs> for the next trip because you might have gone, you know, place where I'm planning to go to. So um, as a matter of fact, that last space we had, I was just talking, we were just talking about Paris and all that. And I was saying, oh, I need to do a, another trip out there. Um, you must, you must. Yeah. I'll give you, I'll give you a checklist of places I visited. Yeah. Because I saved, I saved that, and uh, will be my pleasure to give to to give it to you as well. Yeah. Would love that. What are you gonna say, Jenny? Okay. Oh no, I said do it. Boy, yeah. Go for it. Absolutely. You have only one life to live. Do it. Amen. <laughs> amen. Amen to that. <laughs> so I did want to just. Yeah. Oh, uh, just real quick before you go into the next thing, Jenny, I was, I was going to mention if we did have people um, in the space that were interested in coming up, come in and ask a question, just let us know how you're doing, vibe with us, uh, feel free to request now. We'd love to get, have you guys up here as well and, and um, you know just hear from you. So if you want to do that, go ahead and request and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll accept you up here uh, as well. Uh, go ahead, Jenny. Yeah, sorry about that. Sorry for interrupting. Um, I was going to ask, uh, you mentioned that you like classical music. So now I have like literally like my pen and paper here because I'm curious if you could give some recommendations or what your like ones that you listen to frequently are classical music. So um, 
I can give you one particular artist. I'm obsessed with him. Mm -hmm. I'm obsessed. He is Asian American. His name is Tony Ann, T O N Y N A N N A A N N. Okay. So T O and Y A N N, right? He's on Instagram, on TikTok, and on Spotify. So what he does, he actually he composes uh, classical music alike, and also he plays piano on it as well. I will be happy to share my playlist of Spotify with you, <laughs> so that way it's going to be much easier, Jenny. That's because, awesome. Like, Thank I, you. I know. I know. I mean, what comes to, you know, cinematic music, it's definitely Ivan Torrent. He is brilliant upon brilliant upon brilliant. Uh, again, obviously, the obvious name is um, Hans Zimmer, right? And if you look him up on uh, Spotify, you'll be able to see a like artist that would be recommended like if i can open my spotify right now and uh tell you uh recently came up uh, i mean it's really hard for me to even say that because there's so many oh i have to tell you this guys look it up my favorite it's not a band but it's a, com a production company it's called audio machine it's all together as one word just look it up audio machine my favorite my favorite. Is there a specific Holy moly. song that you really love by Audio Everything. <laughs> well, well, hold on. Audio Machine, they have my favorite album of all time. It's called, uh, I'm looking it up right now. Just look. I mean, Audio Machine has everything that I like. Um, I can't look it up right now. I don't know why. Uh, uh, I would have to come back to you. Oh, there we go. I found one. I was just playing it <laughs> called Lion's Heart. I don't know. The name just drew me. Yeah. Well, there's, there's, hold on. Um, hold on. There's one particular album. Yeah. I can't, I can't find it. It's, uh, it's, it's in my, in, it's in my brain, but I can't remember it right now. Well, there's one. Um, I can't. <laughs> I can't. Okay. I don't. I don't want to wait. No, you're good. Just, yeah, just, 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 yeah. just look it up. Audio machine, but also two W E, two W E. It's 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 a band that actually revamps uh, like old classical, not classical per se, but even music from '90s, and it makes it into this orchestrated next level two like number two w e i very good stuff very good stuff love it thank you yeah. so much i love asking that question because i like thinking about like what a creator listens to while they're creating yeah. so that's super helpful and yeah thanks for those recommendations and if you do have is it public your um your playlist on spotify i think they're all public Oh, okay. I never, cool. I never put anything private. Okay, awesome. I, I, yeah. So if you send it to me, I might uh, just drop that music alpha on my timeline for other people. Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. Let's do it for sure. I've created a album on um, on Spotify where I add. Um, it's called Instrumental Habit Haven. That's the album where I add my favorite tunes of those people of or cinematic musics or just beautiful play, playlist in there. Just cinematic. Hold on. What's the name of it? Instrumental Haven. There you go. Instrumental Haven. That's the that's the album. Awesome. The, that's the playlist I've created it on Spotify. But again, I have so much more. Like it's really hard to to even to to try to think about that stuff i also like i mean i like all sorts of music i like russian pop i like french music like french uh cafe uh, like a coffee spot kind of a situation mm. like um music is my life it's part of my life funny thing is when i was in the first grade first through third grade my mom put me through music school mm -hmm. piano learning piano 
and I hated it with all my heart. <laughs> and then, and then, like now, my mom sees me creating. She goes like, "Oh my god, I should have put you through art school." I'm like, uh, "You damn straight, you should have put a shit out water, right?" <laughs> That's so funny, but yeah, and I, I actually also have a very like eclectic. Um, you know, taste in music because also like, I mean, it was getting exposed to it from like a lot of different people that had very different taste in music. But my mom also was just like super obsessed with it. And she would just buy, my mom at one point probably had like 30 or 40,000 CDs of wow. stuff. Like she would go to the, the, the music store and just go like bananas, like buying like all sorts of music. And so I grew up like listening to like all sorts of stuff and it really just like brought in a lot of my you know like musical interests and things like that i love you know and just depending on like the mood i'm in you know i'll feel like all right right now i'm like in a jazz mood or maybe in, in a classical mood or i want to play some like you know classic rock or you know old school jazz you know so it's just it can vary like so much or i'm in like latin i want to listen to some salsa merengue bachata you know whatever but uh but yeah i mean some of the what the genres you're talking about too i haven't really like tapped into that much so i definitely would be interested in um you know exploring some of that and, and hearing hearing different things and it's always interesting to kind of get exposed to new artists new new genres you know so yeah i'd love that right yeah yeah i mean music is my life like whenever anything i'm doing in the house whether it's cooking or doing any mm -hmm. sort of errands around the house or you know, driving right or biking or drawing there's always music in my ears even when i wake up in the morning i always put on the radio and i listen to the music or my spotify playlists i always get i i get ready with music nice let's just say that i love it yeah so speaking of music actually we, we had a, a a speaker up on the panel the family who actually wrote a book about music as well uh he's a regular uh on on the uh um, on the spaces here always love having you and joining us man how you doing today Nefemi? i'm good man i'm good thanks for having me and you know I, I was smiling as you were talking about the music so i i have to tag anna for our friday vibes for sure to yes. get some of her music in you <laughs> definitely, definitely gotta uh, has, has, yeah i really i really enjoyed the convo and anna thank you for you know sharing your journey it's always nice to hear from you i i've been in a couple of spaces that you've been in and you you have a lot of wisdom <laughs> in, in terms of create creating um I think you know one question I had is you know I for instance my my wife doodles right and I know like people that doodle kind of have, have sometimes they have this sense of like um, oh it's not just it's not art I'm just you know playing around I'm just doodling um, how I might have missed this maybe you you mentioned this but how how is it for you how did you make that transition from oh I'm just doodling in class and then realizing this is what you wanted to do and this, this is actually art um, that people should value. Like, how did that transition happen? Well, number one, I've had a, I, I've been given, an, I've been, hold on, I've been given a seed by a friend, right, to create a coloring book. So for me, I went on to this um, journey my first year in art right um creating each and every single day and uh, obviously how how do we become better at, at anything right whether it's cooking whether it's even biking or sports or uh, any any knowledge right it's by actually doing it every day by researching it and doing it right by practice practice always makes it better so what i would suggest to your wife or for anyone that wants to be become better at anything that you can think about or you have a goal in mind is put yourself on an everyday train literally you have a schedule of your regular life and then you need to devote at least one hour even 20 minutes would do it, right, of doing it each and every single day. And if, if you do this consistently for a good amount of time, you'll trust me, you will become better 
added. So to give that idea to your wife is tell mm -hmm. her to con continue to do do what she wants to do, but practice, 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 and and for mm -hmm. for a better understanding if she is becoming better tell her to create an instagram account so she can target people based on that artwork that she'll be creating like or in that style of doodles uh tell her to research hashtags and see if she can come up with uh you know not come up with but like she'll be able to find her own people that would appreciate her and help her grow. That's how I was able to grow, right? Because I did find my audience. I found my followers who appreciate my art, right? And who would actually help me with their feedback and their answers uh, of like, they would constantly tell me, oh my God, Anna, this is next level, right? And uh, like, how, how do I know if I'm better? Like, I would, I don't know if I'm better, right? Like, Funny thing is the way it worked in my in my art journey, like I never know if this drawing or that drawing would make it unless I share it publicly and people give me feedback. And I'm very open to feedback, whether it's positive or negative. And honestly, I have not had a negative feedback so far. I don't know why. Maybe people because maybe people love me just the way I am or I don't know, but I really never had a negative feedback. So I've been lucky. <laughs> uh, th th thanks, Anna. Uh, um, um, I, I guess to, to follow up on that question, um, for you, um, you know, a lot of us make, create different things, whether it's you're building a business, whether you're, you know, writing, doing visual arts, making music. Um, I personally know that I enjoy making music just for the fun of making music uh, without necessarily having that intention of sharing it. Um, and I know for you, with, for instance, with the drawings, and um, you did mention, you know, it puts you in this meditative state, like kind of like a flow state. Um, what is more important to you is, is, the, is the process of creating and being in that state um, more important than sharing the work or is it the other way around? No, it's definitely the process. It definitely, again, um, I do have this routine of every day, right. Of creating something And it. If I don't create one day something, it's like, I feel like something's missing in my life. Right. So I'm a very consistent and routine person, uh, discipline in that way as well. So, and I don't create just to share it out there, but I create it mostly for me. That's how it all started. And I think it's extremely, it's extremely important to figure it out, the balance bet between those, between the two. You know, when I came into NFT space and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I um, finally was able to, you know, sell my digital pieces. I mean, obviously that gives me like the biggest high when I'm able to sell my work. That means what for me, not only monetary value, but it most importantly, it's the, the fact that people are willing to spend their money on my art. That gives me that credibility status saying like, Anna, you are, good because people are willing to pay for that so that gives me that kind of like exclamation point to continue to do what i do and become better each and every single day and most importantly not to quit because when we quitting whether we in a i don't know funky state or some shit happened i don't know right but like right now because i've been in the space for two years I've seen a lot of people left the space. Why? Because they gave up on themselves. They didn't give up. Ability to produce on the idea that, okay, I'm done because this is not paying me anything. But you know what, guys? I've had time where, I don't know, I didn't make anything for six, eight months. You know what I mean? I'm still producing art because I love what I do. I don't produce it just to make the money. 
money is the biggest edification to continue to do what I do because people appreciate it, right? But we do, I do create art because that gives me the best satisfaction, right? It, it, this is my time when I'm able to devote myself to work and when I'm in the process of creating, it gives me that ability to spend time for myself, right? So long time ago, very long time ago, this may not be related to art, but this also is extremely important for us as humans, right? Is to find something that could make us happy, right? Whether it could be, you know, reading books or riding bikes or traveling, something even attainable on a daily basis, find something that can make you happy, right? Or, you know, even when you, when you go shopping, right, and you buy yourself something that will make you look better, right, like a piece of clothing, right, you're doing this for you, you're not doing it for others, you're doing it for you, you know, so this is what makes me continue to turn my way to my time, this is my time, after 9 p.m. PM each and every day, again, coming back to Florida in, in a few days, so I'm looking forward to my time. I mean, I have been creating digital works, right? Don't get me wrong. I've been creating each and every day. I have not created much uh, physical pieces, but I have been creating digital exclusively because it's just like, again, I'm not at my most comfortable level because the way this desk here is. But um, needless to say, I love what I do and I do it with love and passion. And most importantly, most important lesson about being who you are, don't be ever afraid of telling people who you are. And those critics or judges that tell you what the fuck you think you're doing, right? Especially, you know, so-called friends from your personal life may be judgmental toward the stuff that you be doing. Trust me, I turned off that radio a long time ago. And the way I am in my life, I don't ever sugarcoat things. And I don't ever give two shits about those opinions. So tell that to your wife. Don't don't Thank take you. shit from people that don't appreciate her. Most importantly, you is a husband that um, continue to give your support to you, to her. Tell her to continue to do what she does, you know, and continue to work on her process that makes her happy. For sure, for sure. Thanks, Anna. Um, well, thank you for I, your wonderful. My battery is about to die. Oh, for sure. <laughs> I have my phone plugged my in. My is about to die, so I'm going to step off. <laughs> All right. Thank, thank you, you very for much. joining the space. I appreciate that. For so sure. Much. All right. Take care. Take thank care. You. Bye, y'all. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. Appreciate you always coming up, man. All right. The other person we got on the stage is our dear friend. Oh, wait. Does he? Did he? Oh, here he is. Luco, how you doing, brother? Yo, yo. What's good, familia? What's good? What's up? Um, I'm really happy today. Happy to hear you, brother. You said I always love the vibes, man. Always love the vibes. Always, always the vibes, bro. You know, um, what's up, family, family, Anna, Jenny, David, Jason, Matias, Carlo. Well, here are dope, a banger, banger space. Thanks so much for that. I feel really happy, not only because hearing about Anna, because this whole week has been Anna week because of the Twisted Chick um, blog. I read it. So today here, here in Anna, Anna week. <laughs> this made me Thank so you. happy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Luca. You're, you definitely... Thank you for bringing that point up. I mean, not only, you know, Twisted Chick's blog came out, I've had two sold out one of my editions sold out right the twilight blooms thank you for thank you all for grabbing that then we've had a record me and newly fair the frequent mama we had a drop i listen to this this is another very epic story that happened we dropped it at the le- i dropped it at 11 p.m at night and guess what by i believe 
Like when I walk up, we only have three editions left. I always drop not more than 10 editions. So, um, and then uh, by, I, I, I don't know, it, it sold out in 12 hours, basically, less than 12 hours. We had that sold out. And now we have, I have another drop that with, with uh, M. Pozzacco, uh, <laughs> that also, surprise, we have a drop of uh, collaboration. And I uh, also have my own that I've created specifically for today, um, uh, which is called uh, uh, Spirit blooms. Spirit blooms. Yep, that's the one. So, but next week, guys, I'm taking a break. I'm leaving to Florida. I'm not going to be around. And, um, um, and uh, whatchamacallit. So, I'm not going to be making any drops for the next week because um, it's simply, I will be on the road. It's going to be very challenging for me to do that. Well, uh, that's super, super, super amazing. I'm so glad to hear that, Anna. Congratulations so much. Well, um, I just wanted to come up and say hello. Um, hola a todos. Um, I really enjoy this space so much. Um, to hear from you, Anna, it's really, 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 for me, an admirable thing, an admirable path. Um, you are like inspiration in this space, and I'm super glad to know you more. Um, with this space and also with the blog of of Maggie. Um, and yes, um, I just wanted to ask you a little bit thing basic. Um, I, I was hearing about the music and all these things. Um, you, uh, you enjoy only listening to music or you like to dance it too, like to move your body and connect and with that. That's like my simple question and well, um, give the vibes and give always thank you on the flowers to Giancarlo and Jennifer for doing this amazing space. I really enjoy every single week, um, every single Friday to meet more people, meet more artists, hear about them, their stories, and also all the information that you give us here, Anna. Um, I learned a lot, a lot of that. So thank you so much for that. Well, Luca, thank you so much for coming in, for answering the, uh, for asking the question. Not only that, for taking the, you know, almost I don't know how long we've been on for. Almost two hours has been one hour and forty minutes for you guys all to stay put and you know listen to me, uh, my story and whatnot. Of course, I love to dance, dude. I haven't been in a club in a long time, but I do love to dance. I I do love to dance, of course. <laughs> I'm a big fan of EDM, trans, uh, ele 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 electric music as well. So obviously club music. My favorite DJ is Armin Van and who I love to listen to in the car. Not when I'm drawing because it's just too That's fast, too <laughs> but I want it's not too much. It's never too much. But when I'm in the car, when I'm driving, and I do love to drive fast, that's another thing about me. Actually, I forgot to say, I'm one of a, I'm, I'm a crazy driver, so I love to drive fast. <laughs> and when I'm driving fast, I list, I listen to Armin Van Buren. Wow, love it. I, I just uh, don't expect that for real, but I love that because, well, I love and enjoy so much the techno music too. And how about Latin Latin rhythms like um, reggaeton and all these things? You Do you enjoy to hear this or not, not enough? I do. Okay, so back in the days, not reggaeton particularly, but I do enjoy salsa. Uh, a lot so and i do know how to dance a little bit merengue and salsa so let's go <laughs> <Love it. laughs> hello i'm from new york so i have to you come got on to, yeah, okay. yeah. Me, me, me me habla espano muy poquito <laughs> like just a little bit like i know i understand more than i can speak it but <laughs> every new yorker has a dash of latino in them that's right that's right <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you, Nico. <laughs> appreciate you coming thank up and you. asking a thank question, man. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. Thank oh, you, Nico. Thank you, fam. I really appreciate all of you so much. So, well, happy happy Friday to all, and thanks for having me here. Um, yeah, yeah. Here. Let's go. Let's go. Happy Friday. All right. I'm going to keep it rolling with the other people we got up on stage. We got David. How's it going, my friend? Hey, guys. 
Hi, hey, Carlo. Hey, Loanna. Hey, 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 Thank hey. you. I just wanted to come up and say hey. Hey, Jennifer. I just wanted to say how, what a pleasure it was learning more about you as an artist. And it's really cool to hear your history of, you know, how you kind of evolved into where, where you are today. And it's just amazing. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you so much, David. I appreciate you a lot. Thank you. And uh, I mean, it's great to have such amazing support, not only obviously, you know, when people buy your art, but they just simply support you and are there for you. And that's what I'd like to do as well for others. So I, I really appreciate your support, David. You've been an amazing human. Uh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's it's one of the most important things in this space. I think it means so much just the little, little things. Like for me, it's like seeing like a like on something that you had posted is like kind of gets me going, you know, it's like just, yeah. And it doesn't really take much. It's just, uh, you know, kind of comes naturally for everyone. Cause I feel like we're all like a big family here now. That's absolutely right. And you know what I like to say, one of my other favorite quotes, in which I actually implement in my life all the time, it's the little things that count that actually will end up to be a big, big, big things. So it's the little things that count. Yeah. So continue the, the to do the things. little things, please. <laughs> they always start off small. They really are. They have yeah. to start somewhere, but it's like a seed. You grow it and you nurture it and it'll become like a blue, beautiful flower. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm a big fan of flowers too. Like when I was doing like my reverse glass art, I that was like one of the first things I loved to paint were flowers and stuff. So kudos to that. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, I I love flowers. I mean, they just make me happy. That's why I love I love to mm -hmm. devote my time to you know gardening and uh, drawing. You know as much as I possibly can or on the flowers because it's not always the flowers that I draw. Uh, but the, it's just like, I mean, life gets so crazy busy with other aspects, which we're not going to get into, but especially for the past three years, it's been wild. Uh, but you know, we, we all need to find that time for ourselves doing what we love the most. And I think spending time with the right people or doing things that actually brings us joy the most. So I think it's really important. Yeah. Flowers make make me happy. That's awesome. Well, thank, you. thank you so thank much, you. David. Appreciate you coming up here and uh, you know asking a question, and letting us know how you're doing. Always appreciate you, man. My pleasure, guys. All right. Well, hope you have a great Friday. Uh, I know we also got Yusuf Bata, uh, who was also our guest here a while back uh, in the audience. How you doing, my friend? Hey, how you doing, Giancarlo, Jenny, my dear Anna, and all the people that are here. I really appreciate you coming here to support one of the legends here of the Web3 space. Uh, I try to give you like flowers all the time, Anna, but I think they're not enough for whatever, <laughs> for all the things that you have done for our community, for me personally. I think you're a great inspiration, and it's really good to have this. Like Lucas said, this on a weekend. <laughs> I know. Thank you, Yusupata, for coming up and, uh, you know, just even the fact that you took the time for two hours to to hear my story, hear more about me. And, of course, your support means the world to me. And, uh, again, somehow it's... It, I mean, I don't know what, but I think it's it comes from the universal uh, universe that makes me always reach out to you or share some valuable uh, tips and tricks here and there or whatever it is I may, may do. Uh, of course, um, I'm looking forward for you to when when you when when you are ready to jump on Tazo so I can start buying every single day from you. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, throwing it out there, hint. Shin, I know you're doing bueno, but I'm I'm doing Tezos right now, so I'm happy. Um, I'm I'm happy. So if you're on the camera, can you please leave? Thank you, my husband. I mean, <laughs> but of course. <laughs> 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 oh my God! It's like you know, like what you you have that. Like, uh, I don't know if those of you have little kids, they they just like pop in your mm -hmm. camera. <laughs> yeah. 
I, I, I had to move like my office to a different room because before like they would just well, pop in like all the time or they'd be running around I'm like all right I need, I need well, to be, like, in a more I'd secluded be in, if, area <laughs> i know if i'd be in my house i would lock the door i don't have the ability to do that here because it's not my house we're leaving on sunday finally but you zapata you are a phenomenal friend you are a phenomenal artist i love Everything you create, you have that very distinct style about your graffiti style. And I love graffiti, by the way. I actually tried doing graffiti a long time ago, long, 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 long time ago, back in high school, where I would just graffiti my name on a paper and like just practices and then practice in a different style. Like little did I know, like, I don't know. So many years later, I'd, I'd see I meet a guy who does phenomenal way graffiti style, you know, pigeons. Like, what? That's crazy. So, I mean, Palometto has a special heart, special place in my heart. So, um, I would love to see you in Tezos. I'm just saying. I, I, I want to see you in Tezos. And uh, I'm just saying. So, when you're ready, uh, I'll, I'll be your first collector. I promise. <laughs> Thank you, thank you very much. This is really, really like you're like pushing me here. I, <laughs> I am. I am. <laughs> it's for I a am. reason. <laughs> Pretty good. Yeah. I mean, I know, look. I know. So, so, so here, here's what I'm gonna tell you is this, right? One of my biggest inspiration in this space as a uh, NFT artist, not that I obviously inspired by his art, but I am inspired by him as a human being. Is obviously Ali Sabad. Right. I could I could speak about him a, lo a lot because each and every single time he pops on uh, spaces, I get a notification and I hear what he has to say. So I've heard his story many times. And one of the things key takeaways that actually I've listened, I've heard uh, right before I jumped onto Tezos, he said, listen, I always like to diversify and I like to try new things. I'm actually not, I'm not a big fan of trying new things. I'm a big fan of what he said. So that kind of clicked in my head and I'm like, listen, what do I have to lose? You know, you know what I mean? Like I converted $100 into Tezos and I'm like, okay, let's go. And besides the point, we have a huge community in Tezos right now. And anyone who is everyone, trust me, you will be mm -hmm. appreciated. So I think we always have to see how community reacts to certain things and basically roll with the flow. So I'm rolling with the flow. You know, I'm not the one who first went into Tezos. You know what I mean? Tezos have been around for a long time. It was just a moment in time right now for all of us to be on it. So I think it's just like, let's go. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's like you have to try new things. You have to experiment. My Tesos teacher is Luco, so mm -hmm. I've been like talking to him, seeing. So, so I've been working more like lately in in my physical artwork because I have to prepare a, an exhibition and stuff. But for sure, I I'll be joining Tesos in any day soon, maybe. With a collaboration with you, Anna, or <laughs> <laughs> let's of see what course. happens. I mean, why not? I'm, I, I'm, I'm actually. I have started. I was finishing on Luca's collaboration yesterday. I have a few more touching pieces to finish, and then I'll send him a, a screenshot. And if he likes it, we'll, uh, we'll drop it as soon as I'm back to Florida next week. I'm not dropping anything because, again, I'm going to be out of out of out of loop basically i don't do anything on my phone everything is on a computer uh that has to do with crypto or nfts i'm i'm just like uh i don't trust the phone situation i really don't but uh i need to be situated so hopefully when i come back and situate in my house in florida you know that's the next uh that's that's what we will do we will drop Luca's collaboration on tazos and hopefully you guys will like it and then, and then it will be you, you Zapata. <laughs> That's how you're gonna right, get us right after that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll that make you come for pleasure. <laughs> I will, I will, I will give you tips and tricks, and uh, I can tell you that it's no, it's no, it's, it's. I mean, it's just a different platform mm -hmm. and different coins. But I'm pretty. If trust me, I'm no techie. I'm not a techie person. 
But if I can get around and be very, very kind of comfortable using that, trust me, you will be too. Yeah, thank you for the advice. And it was really good to know about your dancing skills. That's really, really something else. <laughs> Here in Colombia, okay. you know, we are really, really good dancers. We try to be dancing by, by all means mm -hmm. for any reason. So anytime you come to Colombia, eh, I think Giancarlo knows about this and Jenny and a lot of people here. We will be dancing for a lot of reasons here in Colombia. So oh, hope to have you here. <laughs> Or maybe we don't have, wait, wait a minute. Maybe we just we just meet in Miami for our mm -hmm. dance. Like Hopefully it's still yeah. on for you guys. I am I am rooting for for Art Basel. Uh, I hope to like to sell a lot of things here. I hope to uh, find a place to exhibit over there, and for sure, me and Hudasaka and I hope Luco too. Luco, all are, you guys like, need to come, man. <laughs> we want to we want to be there for Art Basel. I think that will be a really beautiful meetup for all of us. Hundred percent. Jen, I definitely need to hit you up and jump on the board of that. Um, the house, absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. I think I'm definitely on it. Yay. It's going to be great. So awesome. Well, we, all, we all need to mingle together in person. Let's that make it happen. So awesome. Let's make it happen. <laughs> I see uh, I see. Luco's raising his hand. Hey, no, yes, um, yes, actually, um, a lot of, of, of topics. <laughs> the first one, yes, I, I was already told on um, Jenny um, that I want to go. I am manifesting it to go. That will be such a great, great moment for all and um, to meet up in Art Basel with Jusapat and Kudasaka. For sure, we are going to go and do some street graffiti over there. And the other thing that I want to say that, yes, I already said you, To go to Texas, no, I already say him, but yes, um, um, and actually, I wanted to say that I remember Anna, um, when we were talking on Jason Space like uh, um, a time ago, maybe like months or two months, about the new blockchains and so Solana and all this stuff. So see your successful um path on it on Texas, since we talk about that on on all these things, um. That only makes me so happy. So congratulations for that. And yes, we'll be working on that. I am waiting for so hard to see the call up. So well, let's go. Let's keep rolling. And yes, we are manifesting to go over there and air base. So we meet and we dance, of course. Dance for of life. Course. Of course, of course. Yes, look, I will as soon as I'm done here, I will send you a screenshot on Twitter message to show you what I've created last night and hopefully you will like it. So, and um, and then again, a week from now, we'll mint it, drop it on Tezos and, you know, let the world see. I'm I am pretty excited about of, of that collaboration because I actually did something different. So hopefully, again, I'm like, If I'm working on one of the other things about collaborating, right, unless I'm fully satisfied with what I've created, I will share it with that artist. But if I'm not satisfied, I'm going to start everything from scratch, right, and uh, do it again and again and again. So um, until I'm satisfied to share before I share it with the other artist and then with, with the rest, of course. So, oh, my God, yeah. Oh my God, it's been two hours. Holy moly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. Um, and since I do want to kind of bring it to a close, I think the, the one last question I was going to ask you, Anna, was because uh, we usually ask this and I'm always intrigued by it is, you know, what are, what would you say are your top uh, three favorite movies of all time? <laughs> wow. So that's another one. I'm a huge movie buff. Me and Jennifer was just discussing this not, mm -hmm. not long ago. And funny thing is, yesterday we went to watch Indiana Jones. Uh, that would be that. That would be one of my favorite movies of all time. Honestly, I love adventure movies. I mean, um, everything that has to do also with the fact that they went and discovered those, you know, uh, art artifacts or whatnot, right? So it was a great movie, really good. Thank goodness there was no none of the crazy stuff that we usually see recently. Mm -hmm. You know, um, uh, my I'm also romantic i love romantic movies one of my favorite movies of all time is um 
uh, Under the Tuscan Sun. Mm, uh, good one. <laughs> I love that movie. And all-time favorite movie. I don't know if you even were around when this movie came out, but that movie, you uh, m- you must watch it. I know they recently made a remake of that movie, but it no 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 bueno no bueno. No bueno. So don't don't waste <laughs> don't your time on remake. that. No, don't watch the remake. It's dirty rotten scoundrels. Dirty rotten scoundrels with Steve Martin and I forgot the other guy's name. Epic movie about two scam artists that went to south of france they were scamming people but it's not because they were scamming people it's just the movies the movie came out i want to say late 90s right so old movie right and um it took place in southern france and it's just like the whole atmosphere where they are that just movie just like it's just so epic you have to watch it i promise you you will not regret it and it's funny it's a comedy movie so i like adventure movies i like comedy movies i like i like actually high speed chase movies as well so to go um, along with your fast driving <laughs> that's right yeah well yeah i i do like that that's you know that's another hobby my husband and i flew to vegas several times and every time we didn't go for a casino plane you know we we flew there for conferences and after the conference we went to the racetrack where you actually get to pick high high speed cars i'm talking about ferrari lambos wow and i got a chance of a lifetime to rent austin martin and do few laps around the track that was the highlight oh my god i'm so happy just the moment you turn on the engine of that car guys it's unlike anything else i bet so yeah all right cool good recommendation i I have not seen dirty run uh, scoundrels but i am a big fan uh of steve martin Martin yeah i I don't know if you recently watched um uh what is the name of this show uh only murders in the building um Oh mm-hmm. man, it's it's, no. it's, this, it's this movie, this TV series with uh, Steve Martin, Martin Short, and actually um, Selena Gomez. But it's 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 funny. It's got a little bit like mystery intrigue. It's 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 really good. But yeah, no, I, I got to check out that movie. I actually have not seen it, so I yeah. will, uh, I'll watch one, it. One one other movie I could always recommend on Netflix. Mm-hmm. Actually, I'm a big Netflix person. I mean, I love Netflix series. Uh, Blacklist, my favorite of all time. Uh, it, I believe there's eight or nine seasons mm-hmm. in there. Holy moly, amazing! Uh, and uh, The Last Kingdom. Those two, I would always recommend. The Last Kingdom. I believe there's four or five seasons in there. So, hmm. so Blacklist. I've seen The Last Kingdom. I have not. So put that on the list too. Yeah. So The Last Kingdom is about uh, how Christianity was introduced in in um, in Britain in Britain back 800 years ago so how Vikings was fighting that because Vikings was pagans right so again this was part of the history so that's why I love mm-hmm. watching that and anything that that has to do with hot looking Vikings is also <laughs> kind of like a big big checklist for me <laughs> so it's good it's really good Awesome. Well, I will definitely put that on the list to check out. And uh, again, I know we already went a little bit over two hours, so I wanted to go ahead and try to try to wrap it up. But uh, thank you so much, Anna, for you know joining the space today. It was so much fun. I really enjoyed you know learning more about you and your passions, your art, you know your your, your uh, social media. I mean, you also gave us so many good like tools, tips, advice. Um, and like several others said, I mean, you've done so much for so many people and like the community to really like help them to grow and improve. And you are, you are amazing. So it's it just a pleasure, such an honor to have you here. And uh, thank you so much uh, for being our guest today. Well, first, uh, I mean, I mean, I could always do so much more for this community, right? I feel sometimes maybe I don't do enough, but I do try to always give back, give back, because, you know, at the end of the day, what you give away, you always get to keep and you get to make wonderful relationships, friendships with these people. So to me, that's a big plus. 
big bonus of that. Uh, extremely grateful to you, Giancarlo and Jennifer, for you know having me part of your space. You know, for two hours, me uh, sharing story about myself, about my journey. You know, of course, sharing wisdom is another big thing that I like to do and, you know, what I can share to others that they can help them to grow. You know, it, 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 I don't know why, but it just like, it gives me a tremendous pleasure to do so because, you know, it's like, we, we can't take away the knowledge with us up there. You know what I mean? When we're gone. So why not and share it with others, you know? So I'm, I'm very grateful for the time guys. Thank you so much for taking the time for those of you who came and listened for two hours, me speaking majority of the time. So I, I appreciate that so much. Like, I'm sure like, oh my God, how much more of Anna can you take for two hours? That's crazy. But I certainly hope that this was um, entertainful and learning and a, a pleasure, pleasure, pleasurable experience for you guys because it certainly was for me. So thank you. Thank you so much for, for doing what you do, guys. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. And thank you yeah, again. Thanks for everybody that was here listening. Uh, for some of our regulars that join you know, every week, we appreciate you guys so much. I hope everyone here and you, Anna and Jenny, all have a great Friday and a wonderful weekend. And also safe travels back to Florida, Anna. <laughs> so hopefully you can be back. Thank you so much. I'm I'm I am so excited. You're so ready. excited. To <laughs> all right. Well, bye everyone. Take care. Thank you all. Bye everyone. Bye, everyone. Thank you for thank you for being here. Bye everyone.